and welcome to the first video on this channel of 2024 and I thought I'd use it to look back at my solar generation for the whole of 2023 and what I did with that solar generation, how much I used myself, how much I exported back to the grid and importantly how much money has that saved me and in terms of SEG how much um, have I made from it. So if you've been watching my videos before on this subject um, you'll be fairly familiar with my setup which is 12 Q-cell 385 watt panels on a south facing roof in Swansea uh, that feed into a 5 kilowatt solis inverter which then is split into a uh, 5 kilowatt hour pure drive battery or used to power my home or goes back to the grid. And you also know that I'm currently a British gas customer uh, with dual fuel, so I have gas uh, central heating and a gas hob, but I use electric for oven heating. I've also now got an air fryer, um, also do some slow cooking with it, um, and use the electricity for other general things, you know, such as lighting and watching TV and all that type of thing. I've also got a 700 watt infrared heating panel which I've had for just over a year and there's a previous video which I'll link above uh, in the bedroom which we use just to um, provide additional warmth and quick heating uh, before bed. So my tariff with British Gas is I pay just over 23p uh, on a standing charge for my electricity which I can't do anything about so I haven't included that in the figures today and we pay about 19.5p per kilowatt hour of import. I'm also with So Energy, or been with So Energy for the majority of the year, which pays 5p per kilowatt hour of export. However, I'm currently in the process of moving to the British Gas Export Tariff as of the middle of December, which pays 15p. I should also point out that I'm filming this on the 31st of January at around 7 o'clock, so my figures aren't complete for the whole year, um, they're up until this time now. I've just done my measurements off the Solis app and my smart meter, which is where I'll get all the information from, which then goes into a spreadsheet that I use to calculate everything. But it's going to be within a kilowatt hour or two, so it's going to be within 40 pence or so. Okay, so let's see uh, how much electricity I've used through uh, this year. So the amount of electricity that I've actually used is, look on my spreadsheet, 2,341 kilowatt hours. That's pretty much bang on what I uh, said to Glow, Glow Green, who installed my solar panels and did all the uh, did the initial calculations. Um, I did my own set of calculations um, as well and I told them that it was going to be between 2,000 and 2,500 kilowatt hours per year that we use and as you say, we're pretty much bang in the middle of that. This also tallies in with I use roughly uh, on average, or well, obviously on average, but what well, for my uh, at monthly electricity uses, I use about 200 kilowatt hours a month, so that's 2,400, so about 60 less than that. So the important thing is how was that split between my own generation and import? So that's what this graph shows. So the blue is my own electricity. So this is electricity I've generated on the roof and used in real time, or an electricity I've stored in my battery and then used when needed. Red is my import. So as you can see, through the summer months of May to September, very little import, as you would expect. And through um, the winter months, such as January, February, November and December, a lot more. Uh, import. Um, so as you can see from the point of view of something like June where we use just over 200 kilowatt hours as I said that's pretty much our average less than four of those kilowatt hours came from import and 197 of them came from my own power. But if you look at uh, December uh, which has been particularly grey here in Swansea uh, I've used 108 of my own kilowatt hours and uh, 90, 
eight or so of that, or was that 93? So I can't read my other right to know over that, has been from electricity import. In terms of just generation, the best day we've had this year was on the 1st of June, where we generated nearly 33 kilowatt hours. And the worst days were in December, where we had multiple days where we only generated 0.2 of a kilowatt hour. So those days relied heavily on import. I should point out that we don't have a cheap overnight tariff, so we can't, um, there's no point in charging the battery overnight on the chief tariff at all. Well, it would be point to doing it, but I can't do it. So we don't charge the battery overnight, we don't replenish it um, from import, unless the state of charge in the battery falls below the threshold of 10%, where the battery then charges itself up um, a little bit just to protect itself and keep the battery chemistry stable. So, we can have a look at this in terms of money. So as I say, we have used 2,391 2, kilowatt hours of electricity um, throughout the year. Of that, 1,988 kilowatt hours has been generated myself. So that means I'm only about 15, just uh, over 15% reliant on the grid, so about 85% self-sufficient, which again was right in the middle of my estimates that I thought was reasonable. Um, when I got my solar panels, I thought I'd be, be probably between 75 to 85%, so I'm right at the top end, actually, of what I thought. Um, you'll look back at my other videos, and I did a calculation where it would be 90% uh, self-sufficient, but that wasn't going to be ever realistic. But the important thing is how, how much did we actually generate? So we generated 4,812 kilowatt hours. This is above what Glow Green thought we would generate, which would be between 4,000 and 4,500. As I say, we do have a pretty much perfect roof for solar panels, which means that we sent 2,950 kilowatt hours back to the grid. So we sent back quite a lot more, nearly a thousand kilowatt hours more than we used. So what would be nice is to actually use those, those kilowatt hours ourselves, because we would get a better return on the 5p we're getting. Um, now with British Gas paying 15p per kilowatt hours, becomes a little bit more uh, whether we want to send it back or whether we want to use it ourselves. It starts uh, going a bit through swings and roundabouts. I should say we do have an EV, but still no charge point at home because we have no driveway. Um, we're also looking at moving more of our heating to electric, so we are going to be investigating a air source heat pump in 2024. Um, of course, that won't really help us over the winter months when we particularly need the heat pump because I don't think we have enough excess solar to really make a big dent into the heating of the home. So there's going to be a little bit of calculations to um, bear in mind with that. So, how does this actually transfer into money? So those who are interested in things like payback, we paid £8,500 for our solar panels um, last August, and we're expecting about a 10-year payback. Because we're on just a cheap deal in our and we haven't had the particularly export power, if, um, the payback this year we were expecting to be quite low, um, as you will see. So this is the graph of payback each month. So in green is money we have saved by not by not having to give money for import to British Gas. So you can see in December, that's our lowest month where we've saved the equivalent of £21.17p. So that's what we would have paid for our import. However, in months like again June and um, May, where we're up above £38 and above £39, and we only had import there of for those two months combined, of less than two pounds. So in our worst case month, which again was this December, we have spent just over 17 pounds by the time we take the account the last five hours of this year um, for import. And as I say, we've uh, had very some months where the import has been very low. The blue here is our payments from the SEG. So as you can see, again, in May, that was our biggest seg month of just over £28.84p. Um, and again, in December, where we've made barely a pound, where we haven't even made a pound from uh, export. It might be a bit above by the time we take it into the British Gas account, but export this month has been really, really low. I think that amounts to um, 
less, uh, just over 19 kilowatt hours that we've exported through the whole of December. I will do a whole video on December, which will be released on Friday. So please hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with my videos. So, how does this affect the total of our uh, money, I suppose? So, the money we saved in total for, from, not, from having solar panels and not importing from British Gas has been £389.48p. The money in SEGS, that's a 5p we then paid, that has amounted to £147.56p. So if we add those two together, it's a payback on our solar panels of £537.04p. So as I say, that if we can extrapolate that up and we pay that, add that every year, it would take me over 16 years for us to pay back our investment on the solar panels. However, uh, with the increase in uh, SEG payments up to about 15p, that means next year we should be making about £450 in SEG, provided we don't go for the heat pump. And also, because we're well below that price cap, although the price cap might be coming down a bit more in April, let's say it's about 25p, we will be earning about another quarter on top of that again, which will be another £100. So that will mean we're about £400 more next year than this year, which will take us up to nearly that £1,000 rate. And then you start looking at the payback in terms of uh, probably about eight years. Or if you want to do it in terms of sort of percentage rate of what you'll be getting if you put that money into a bank, it's about 9%. Um, so that's been really good for us. So we've been happy with how our solar panels have been performing. They've overperformed in generation. We've changed some of our lifestyle choices, like when we put on dishwasher, dishwasher and washing machines on, and our cooking methods to make things more efficient. Now, as you also see in the videos, we've also invested in things like smart plugs as well. So overall, very, very happy with that. It means that the money we're making effectively per day, or saving and from SEG for this year has been one pound 47 a day and we've been saving on average £1.7p a day on just the import. Have you noticed, uh, have you noticed I haven't actually compared to last year, there's very little point in comparing to last year as we only had the solar panels for four months of 2022. But in a year's time I'll probably be doing another one of these videos where I look at my solar generation for 2024 and comparing it to the whole of 2023 and seeing if it's better or worse. Oh, I should just say, the last figure is how much have I actually spent on import for the entire year. So if I hadn't had solar panels, I would have paid £460-ish in import. In fact, instead, all I've done paid for my import is £69.04. So less than £70 for the whole year of import. So I say very, very happy with that. Just to finish off this video, just what things I've got planned for the coming year. So as you know, I'm going to do some videos on, I've told you about my um, December generation and every month I'll still do my monthly review. Um, I've recently spent a week down with my partner's um, family down in Southampton. They've got solar panels and batteries, so I'm going to be doing a video on that, comparing their system to our system. Because on the face of it, it looks very similar but in practice it's very different, different um, orientation of roof. Um, they have economy seven, so different use of the battery. So that's gonna be interesting to uh, cover. Uh, this year I'm also gonna go back to making some more maths videos. So as you know, I'm also a private tutor for physics and maths. Um, so um, I'm gonna do some more videos on that, help people through their GCSEs. Um, starting off with a series of sort of basic maths, such as long multiplication, long division, adding, subtracting, and stuff like that, and then go into some more advanced stuff for the A-level students. This year, um, I'm hoping to do more of the sort of science-style videos, because I am a nanotechnologist, I am a professional physicist as well. And um, one of the videos I've wanted to go back to making um, has nothing to do with solar panels, we might have a little bit, um, and batteries. I will make videos on those as well. But is exploring where is the nano, so this is looking at nanotechnology in everyday life. Um, including films. So if you've seen the latest no, uh, no James Bond film, which came out last year, 2022, might have even been 2021, um, which was No Time to Die with Daniel Craig in it, part of that relied around nanobots and like a nanovirus. Um, 
and I'm going to make a video explaining is that actually realistic, how does it actually work, what parts of it is real. Um, so I'll be making some videos about that and hopefully you'll find those interesting as well. Anyway, once again, Happy New Year and we, I hope you have a prosperous 2024 and I hope to see you in some videos then as well.